you know, I'm sure many of your, your viewers uh, have probably heard uh, of, of Janet Finch in the media and uh, oftentimes it's, uh, it's negative. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as a child growing up, you certainly felt that energy that was there. So uh, it was a struggle to say uh, uh, the least, but, um, you know, having, you know, the, the proper upbringing, I I'd like to say, you know, surrounding myself with the, uh, the right people really allowed me to make that transition from being uh, viewed as maybe something good that couldn't come out of that area, maybe being another stat of an example of what failure looks like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, you know, I, I was fortunate along the way, even though I had setbacks, and it's important that I acknowledge that because people tend to see sort of the finished end of things and think it must have been a smooth ride. But uh, it certainly wasn't the case. There were setbacks along the way, but uh, I was able to transition because of really determination and again, surrounding myself with the right people. Welcome everyone to another episode of Meta Transitions. We are here today with uh, Steve Anderson. He is the deputy mayor of the town Shelburne. Welcome, Steve, to our channel. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. Wonderful. All right, Steve. Uh, so our channel is all about transitions. Uh, so just wanting to know from you, what is your transition story? Oh, wow. It's an interesting place to uh, start. It's a long transition story. <laughs> um, you know, really starting um, uh, with my childhood growing up in uh, Jane and Finch, um, you know, uh, overcoming the obstacles, uh, the plenty of obstacles that were there, uh, coming from a single parent household, uh, six brothers, uh, one sister, and, and um, yeah, and really just uh, trying to find my way in a community that, um, you know, I'm sure many of your, your viewers uh, have probably heard uh, of, of Jane and Finch in the media, and uh, oftentimes it's, uh, it's negative. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as a child growing up, you certainly felt that energy that was there. So uh, it was a struggle to say uh, uh, the least, but, um, you know, having, you know, the, the proper upbringing, I I'd like to say, you know, surrounding myself with the, uh, the right people really allowed me to make that transition from being uh, viewed as maybe something good that couldn't come out of that area maybe being another stat of an example of what failure looks like. Sure. Um, you know, so, you know, I, I was fortunate along the way, even though I had setbacks, and it's important that I acknowledge that because people tend to see sort of the finished end of things and think it must have been a smooth ride, mm -hmm. but uh, it certainly wasn't the case. There were setbacks along the way, but uh, I was able to transition because of really determination and again, surrounding myself with the right people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I hear that, right? So I do know, uh, Jane and Finch, um, because I used to live in Ontario, and yes, it was, a, well, it still is somewhat of a, you know, um, seen as a bad community with crime and all of that, very low SE, um, SES, so I hear you in the sense of, you know, the way that individuals or people outside of that community look at individuals that come from that community, uh, you know, and it sounds like what you're saying is the way that you were able to get to where you are is sort of acknowledging so sort of the challenges that came with living, you know, within that community um, and within sort of the household that you lived in, but it sounds like you had some positive um, role models maybe around you, uh, individuals that were able to help you to, you know, strive for the best and to be able to do what you needed to do to achieve what you've achieved, um, which is great. Um, so I guess, you know, um, what I could ask is maybe could you tell us maybe a few examples of some of the things that helped you to be able to sort of move from, you know, maybe being a student to becoming a lawyer? Because I know you were a lawyer before you became a deputy mayor. So maybe tell us a few stories of how you were able to make those transitions. Yeah, um, uh, a lot of hard work and a lot of focus. Um, uh, as I said, then overcoming a lot of those uh, obstacles. Um, you know, growing up in a community like that, there wasn't a lot of resources. And, and quite frankly, there wasn't a lot of uh, encouragement or people who actually believed that, um, that you could do that. But I have to give credit where credit is due. I mean, there, there was a lot of that, and we could certainly always focus on that. Uh, but there was there was good as you spoke about earlier. You know, for me, 
the, you know, as you talk about becoming a lawyer, and I'm actually still practicing law with the, with the Toronto Transit Commission and also uh, the deputy mayor as well, so I'm wearing multiple hats. But uh, as we talk about that transition moment, in, at least into that career, it was when I was in grade 11. So it wasn't like prior to grade 11 that law was sort of in my front uh, mirror, so to speak, uh, mm -hmm. or, or front view. It was when I was taking this grade 11 law course, I really absorbed the material. I was doing well in the class. And I remember at the time I was attending CW Jeffries in Jane Finch. Mm -hmm. And uh, the teacher pulled me to a side and said she wanted to have a conversation with me. And so I'm thinking, okay, like, here we go. Like, what, what's happening, right? <laughs> what did I do uh, wrong? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, here's a brother being picked on, right? You know, <laughs> my, my guard is up, right? Uh, yes. Because I'm like, okay, I have to sort of get ready to defend myself. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, that was furthest from certainly the thought that I had in my mind because she said to me, she goes, she goes you know, Steve, I've been observing, watching, um, your work ethic and how you've been performing. And she said, you know, Steve, in my view, I think if you continue with this, you'd actually be a good lawyer. Yeah. And things just changed from there because prior to grade 11, I had contemplated being a real estate agent. I wanted to drive the TTC bus at some point. I mean, I, my mind was all over the place. I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be a basketball player. Uh, so I wasn't really settled on anything. I was all over the place. Uh, and then that one uh, form of encouragement, being pulled aside and saying, I believe that you could do this, is really what set the, uh, the, the, um, the, the chain or, or the steps in motion to actually start believing that, yes, I could. Yes. And then I started taking the steps to get there. So obviously, uh, you know, making sure that I kept my grades up, uh, understanding sort of what the requirements were going to be in order to get into law. So educating myself. So I, the encouragement piece was one. And then the other was finding out uh, how are the ways that I can actually accomplish my dream. And so, again, by doing that, I was able to eventually get to where I was practicing law with the, uh, the TTC. I like that. I like that so much because you're, you're basically saying, you know, a small piece of encouragement from a teacher sort of, you know, catalyzed, you know, your life's path. You know, it, it sort of planted a seed in you and sort of refocused what it is that, you know, you're your your possibilities <laughs> opened up your possibilities which is great um sometimes we don't realize just how much our words you know can impact another person and i think you know that teacher's words had a great impact on you um and you know got you to you know to the place where you are today well you definitely had to do the work for sure but you know the words and the encouragement was it sounds was powerful and still stuck with you today that you would even remember that story for sure okay all right thank you for sharing that with us um, and I'm sure um, listeners here, especially listeners that are from a low SES family, you know, sort of listening to your story, um, hopefully they'll find some encouragement from that um, and recognizing that, you know, sometimes the little encouragement that they get from teachers or, you know, others in their lives can be used as a positive stepping stone to something greater. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, just to sort of further add to that point, it's... Um... The, the encouragement is like uh, planting the seed in the garden, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then along the way, it's being nurtured and watered and groomed until it actually flourishes into something. Um, and that seed is that belief um, because there are trials and tribulations and difficult times that will come your way. Mm -hmm. And if you're not rooted and you don't have that belief, then you know I, I, I often describe that as you're like that proverbial leaf in the wind you know, whatever the direction of the wind goes, you, you go along with it, right? Sort of uncertain, like the way I was thinking prior to that moment in grade 11. And so uh, what she did was she planted the belief. And then to your point, I nurtured that with, you know, again, surrounding myself with the right people, working exceptionally hard uh, to ultimately get to the, the stage that I was able to, to get onto. Wonderful, wonderful. So planting the seed, surrounding yourself with positive people and doing the hard work to be able to, you know, germinate that seed and allow it to grow into, you know, what it is that you want, it, want, want to achieve. So being able to have an idea of what it is that you want uh, and to be able to provide it with the right nutrients so that it can grow into the, into the tree that you want it to grow into, which is, mm. which is a great metaphor to be able to, you know, identify 
um, a way of trans transformation and transition for sure. Okay, Steve. So I know that you've written a book. All right. Um, what is the name of your book? And uh, maybe tell us a little bit about how, you know, that bit, that book came to fruition. Sure. And thank you for the opportunity. So the book is not finished yet uh, for <laughs> your viewers. Uh, it is uh, slated uh, for February. I'm timing it for Black History Month. I thought it was a good time to, uh, to launch it. Uh, the book is entitled Driven to Succeed. And, and really what it does, it, it really chronicles um, my story, again, growing up in Jane and Finch, uh, overcoming uh, obstacles. And, and I want to be clear that the success, uh, this is important for your viewers, you know, there's an old saying, it takes a village uh, to raise a child. And so I don't want anybody to think that somehow I'm a self-made man, that it was just because of my own determination that I was able to accomplish what I've been able to accomplish. There were a lot of people who had their hands around me uh, physically in the sense of lifting me up. Uh, spiritually in the sense of prayers uh, that allowed me again to be able to beat the odds, um, quite frankly, uh, coming from Jane Finch to, to be where I'm at right now. So the book really, again, shows the journey and shows the struggle, right? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, oftentimes we see the shiny object at the end, you know, the suits and the car and whatever the case may be. Yeah. And there's a disconnect, right? Depending on who we're talking to, uh, because some people, when, especially our young folks, may not be able to see themselves in, 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 in you if all you're doing is coming to them in that sort of shiny dollar piece sort of look, right? Mm -hmm. So the objective really is to show that, yes, there's that piece, but there was a journey along that piece, and it started from very humble beginnings. And so no matter where you are, whether you are uh, in Toronto or anywhere else in the, around the world where you are yourself are starting from humble beginnings, that don't let that be a barrier um, uh, for you to achieve success the way that you define success. Mm -hmm. And so, again, I, I walk the reader uh, through my journey. Uh, again, being that skinny kid coming from Jane and Finch where, you know, reading the newspapers, there was no way I was going to become the first black lawyer to ever be hired at the Toronto Transit Commission, uh, Commission mm -hmm. to be the first black deputy mayor ever elected in the town of Shelburne, right? And so uh, what the story demonstrates is it's not how you start uh, or even where you start, it's how you decide to finish. And so the, the hope is that the book will uh, inspire uh, young, old, uh, in between, that, um, that if you want it, um, then you could achieve it. Great. That's great. It's such a great message and a positive message that you're wanting to share with, with everyone. And it sounds like a book that I want to read for sure. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. I, I'm very much into biographies and, you know, it sounds like you're trying to inspire hope, which is the same thing I try to inspire here on, you know, our channel, um, wanting to reduce the stigma, you know, of mental health, of, you know, the idea that, individuals can't achieve what they need to achieve because of the barriers or the boundaries that may surround them or separate them from, you know, individuals that have achieved. And it comes sometimes, as you said, it's the perceived notions of what success might look like and the sense of fear that, you know, or lack of belief, like you mentioned earlier, that they can't achieve it because they think that that person, you know, arrived there by, you know, flying on a stork <laughs> sort of thing, right? A fear, mm -hmm. fear. Um, but by, you know, maybe listening to um, this YouTube channel or watching the videos here or reading your book, they may be able to recognize that, you know, successful people came from somewhere. Like I had um, a, one of my guests sort of talk about um, the idea that at one point in his life, he only had $2, <laughs> you know, and he didn't know where the rest of the money was going to come from. And he was walking by a homeless person and, you know, he was basically saying, man, if I didn't have these, this $2, I'd probably be this man, <laughs> right? <laughs> so $2 away from homelessness. And it, it's quite interesting, right, that you can sort of look back at that moment and be able to say, you know, um, I came from somewhere, my story started somewhere. And, you know, I was able to get to where I, I am now by sheer determination, you know, the people around me and, you know, by being able to get some encouragement from others, um, quite similarly to your story. Yeah, and I think uh, it's also uh, important to emphasize that uh, one should not be ashamed 
of the fact that uh, maybe they come from, again, a single parent household or they grew up in a community like Jane and Finch that has that stereotype and that uh, negative perception. Um, I don't see when I, uh, I make it a point uh, to talk about uh, how I started. I don't see my upbringing and where I grew up as a badge of, of shame. I see it as a badge of honor right. um, and really celebrating um, what can be achieved even coming from areas uh, like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Because growing there, uh, growing up in that community, there were a lot of people who were really tight knit, who were doing a lot of positive things, but just weren't getting the, the recognition. And so uh, part of this is really to send the message to buck the stereotype, dismantle the stereotype, get rid of mm -hmm. the stereotype mm -hmm. that um, there's not really good in that community uh, at all. And so this is just um, one story out of many uh, that either come out of Jane and Finch or very similar areas. Yes, definitely, definitely. And I'm proud to be able to share that story with my listeners, for sure. I definitely hear you there in the sense that there, there is sort of that negative stigma surrounding particular communities, you know, especially per, um, communities that have a lot of people of color, right? Um, and, you know, want to definitely share with the world that there's good here, and that there's good within these communities, um, if you only take a chance to look, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thank you for being with us, Steve. I really appreciate you coming and sharing your story with us. Uh, definitely um, send me the link to the book um, whenever it's out uh, and um, I'll share it with the readers for sure so they can get the copy. I look forward to that. Thank you so much. Wonderful. All right. So normally uh, I ask how the listeners can uh, contact you if they want to. Um, or, you know, maybe social media handles that they can, I uh, guess, see what you're doing. Uh, would you like mm -hmm. to share any of that? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, people could uh, find me on uh, Facebook at uh, Deputy Mayor Steve Anderson. Also on Twitter, uh, Deputy Mayor Steve Anderson. And uh, on Instagram at uh, uh, Counselor Steve. Uh, they'll be able to uh, find me on those handles there. Uh, and as you mentioned, uh, with respect to the book, I'll certainly send you the link. Uh, I, I do want to say, and you can share this with uh, your, your viewers, is that the book will be available for purchase on my website. I will provide you with that information. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll be available for purchase on Amazon. Uh, but the one thing I do want to emphasize with respect to that is 100% of the proceeds will be going to three community organizations. One is One Voice, One Team. The other is Operation Black Boat. And another one that is dear to my heart, uh, which I have some affiliation with, is called the Dufferin County Canadian Black Association. Lovely, lovely. So not only are you writing this story to impact the lives of the readers, but you're also wanting to, you know, use the proceeds towards a charitable endeavor, um, which is wonderful. Uh, I'm happy to be a part of that as well. Uh, so thank you, Steve. We really appreciate you being here. Um, and... Um, Thank you uh, for being with us. Thank you. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.